Hey guys, welcome to Kluji Tech Time. I'm David, and this right here is the Skydio. Now, I don't normally do just an unboxing video, but I'm gonna change that for this because I think it's worth it to take an in-depth look at the Skydio 2. It's so different than any of the other drones that are out there, so I wanna look at it in depth and take a look at what comes with it, but also look at why it's designed the way that it's designed and see what we get with it. So let's dive in and take a look. So first off, we're going to look at this case right here. This case is one of the best cases that comes with the default package for a drone that I've seen. It's a great hard case. It's super, uh, super protective. It has a nice chunky uh, zipper here and it's easy to get in and out of. It's got these nice pulls on here. It's got the Scadia Blue, of course. And uh, let's go ahead and unzip it. One of the things that comes with it that I'm not displaying here is it actually comes with a shoulder strap that connects to these D-rings here. But I don't tend to use the shoulder strap, so I just take that off and use the handle that is right here. Great case, great for using for launch and lands. Uh, and it works out great for that. So let's dive in and see what is inside. We're going to see, of course, our money shot. This is the drone itself. Uh, uh, but let's look at the other details that are in here first before we get to the drone. So the first thing we're gonna look at is right here. This is the charging block that comes with the Skydio. Now this is the standard kit that we have here. This is the $1,000, no additional accessories. I have ordered the beacon. I have ordered two extra batteries, I think, as well as the remote control, but they have not shipped yet. Uh, I need a little tissue because I'm crying on that. The remote control is what I'm really, really, really looking forward to, but it hasn't come yet, so boo-hoo. Anyway, so let's take a look at this uh, charging block here. It is a USB-C charging block, but it's not just your run-of-the-mill charging block. This is like you would get with, say, a MacBook Pro or something like that that has a 65-watt charger. So it's pumping out 65 watts through this USB port. So let's take a close look at the details here. We'll see that it puts out uh, five volts at three amps, nine volts at three amps, 12 volts at three amps, uh, 15 volts at three amps, or 20 volts at 3.2 amps, 3.25 amps, just to be clear. And that is where it gets its 65 watt output and it needs every one of those watts to be able to charge this battery and it takes about an hour to charge this up. I'll talk a little bit more about the charging of this here in just a little bit, but let me set the charging block aside. Next thing is that it comes with this chunky USB-C cable and it's USB-C on both ends. So it's going to be USB-C into the block here and then into the drone here as well. You can see the port here. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I always love it when you get these cables that have the uh, organizers on them. I love this uh, Velcro or whatever this is that they have on this. Now we also get two propellers uh, that are extra. Now uh, we'll see that there is a difference in the, these propellers. If you look, this one has a little bit of blue on it and this one has a little bit of gray on it. If we compare up here, we'll see that this propeller right here has blue on it. This one has gray on it. So these are angled differently, so that's how you can tell the difference. Of course, there's different propellers here as well. They're gonna be opposite, so this one is gray, so this one's gonna be gray, this one's blue, this one's gonna be blue. So you have uh, replacement propellers. Hopefully you never actually have to use these because the obstacle avoidance system hopefully keeps you out of trouble, but just in case, they give you some extra ones here. And then they give you a little lens cloth here to be able to clear, clean your lens. Now you're not going to use this lens cloth just for the uh, imaging camera. You're also going to be using it for these obstacle avoidance cameras. So we'll talk about these more in just a little bit, but you wanna make sure that these are clean so that it can see the environment around you and avoid all the obstacles, of course. So we're just gonna set this to the side right here as well. And then the last thing before we get to the actual drone itself is the battery that comes with it. This is a nice battery. Uh, it's got some good heft to it. And if we take a look at it, the details here are 11.4 volts DC, 4,280 milliamp hours, and 48.79 watt hours. 
So it's got a good battery. They estimate 23 uh, minutes for the uh, flight time out of the out of each one of these batteries, and they take about an hour for them to charge. Now I've had a little bit of a uh, uh, little bit of an interesting time trying to get these to charge. Uh, just plugging it in directly with the charger here into the drone here doesn't always make it work and make it charge right away. I've actually lost a lot of time because of that, because it didn't charge when I was expecting it to. You have to turn the drone on in order for it to be charged, which is kind of kind of odd. I, hopefully, uh, Skydio can take a look at that and get that resolved in the future, but maybe that's just how it is. I'm not sure. One of the things is that this battery has this kind of rubbery substance on the top, and this is actually the bottom. This is the landing surface. This is what's going to land on the ground uh, when you land it. So it's going to land like this. And then, of course, one of the cool things about this design for this battery is that it's magnetic. So there's no physical connectors here holding it in. Uh, there's been other drones that have had, you know, little latches and stuff, and they wear down over time. And uh, like the DJI Spark is one that a lot of people have lost their drones because uh, the latches kind of wore down or they didn't get them completely seated in there. They fell out in flight and crashed or fell in the water or something like that. So with this design, you're not going to have that problem. Let me just show you how it works. It's magnetic, so you don't have to do anything. You want to make sure and keep your fingers out of the way. I had my finger kind of overlapping here, and it kind of pinched a little bit, so watch out for that, and it just slaps in there. You can hold it by that. It's not going anywhere. It has a grip on that. The magnets are, are uh, super tight on it. It's going to put it right where it needs to be, and it's going to work great. I really like that. I like how this is the, the landing surface. Uh, so that's what's going to land on the ground. And I actually use it as a hand launch and a hand land. And uh, I don't have to worry about the propellers hitting me at all. If you can see, when I hold it like this, there's a, a separation of like an inch, inch and a half, something like that there, where the propellers are not going to hit your fingers. So you can confidently grab it, let it land in your hand, let it launch here, and it's not going to be a problem at all. I have about three flights in as all so far. Uh, not a lot of flying in so far, but uh, it's I've launched and landed from my hand every single time, and it's worked out fantastic, uh, very confidently, and so on. So it's not a big deal. So let me go ahead and take this off, and then let's keep looking a little bit more at the design of the, the aircraft. One of the other things while we're looking in this battery area where the battery attaches, you can see the contacts here, and then you can see if you're going to connect with your phone to the aircraft, you can see the Wi-Fi name as well as the password to be able to connect to it. And then one of the, the other cool features is this little SD card tray right here, micro SD card tray to be specific. It's really well designed. I really like how they've done this. Uh, it comes in and out really super easy. Uh, you don't have to uh, get any extra utensils or tape or anything crazy like that to get it to work uh, in and out. It just slides right in there. Uh, and is super easy and I don't have any fingernails or anything like that and I can get it in and out super easy with no problems. So that's great. Uh, they've, they've really thought about a lot of things in terms of the design and how it works and I really, really appreciate that here. Now, let's take a look at the gimbal up here. So the gimbal design, of course, is a bit different. It's a three-axis gimbal. It works in uh, the three different planes, right up and down, uh, side to side, and then the roll, of course. This is the gimbal clamp here. Of course, they've got the big old red remove before flight, which is fantastic. A lot of the other com competitors out there have gimbal guards that are either integrated in so well that you don't see them or whatever with the red uh, like this, it stands out, so you know you've got to take it off, which works out well. And it comes off super duper easy. Just uh, grab it and pull it, or put it back on and just kind of squeeze it into place there uh, in the little gap, and it works out fantastic. So let me go ahead and uh, take that off. And let's take a look at the gimbal. The gimbal here is a three-axis gimbal. Like I said, you can see this is the uh, up and down, this is the roll, and then you've got uh, the yaw. Uh, control right there, so back and forth, side to side. Uh, so it works out really well, stabilizes awesome. 
uh, and it's, it's a cool design. This is, uh, I think, he's fairly similar to the R1 Skydio that they first put out. Now, there's they've uh, one of the, the big complaints that I've seen from a lot of people is that they didn't go with a folding design. And I think the reason they didn't go for a folding design is because of these obstacle avoidance sensors here. Of course, these are uh, three different uh, 4K fisheye lenses here that allow it to see the world. There's three on the top here, and there's three on the bottom here as well. And they need to stay perfectly aligned, and when you have foldable arms, those foldable arms, although you can't really see it in flight, there's at least some micro vibrations going on. And because of that, if these were out on a flimsy arm that was moving around, you know, super quick, you know, even though you can't see it, they're still vibrating on a, on a traditional foldable drone, uh, they, it just wouldn't work. The, this vision system wouldn't work. And so they've designed it with these uh, very rigid, stru rigid structure for the design which uh, works out really well. And this is, quite honestly, it's built probably, the build quality on this is probably the best drone I've ever seen. It's better than any of the DJI ones that I've seen uh, or any of the other competitions. So it's a fantastic build design. So that's why they don't have foldable arms is because they need to keep the geometry between these three perfectly aligned and so that they're not moving in flight. So. Uh, the, the, these obstacle avoidance sensors have also influenced the design of the, where the motors and propellers are. Of course, the rear motors here are uh, on top like normal, right? Like almost all the other traditional drones that are out there. But the front ones are underslung here. And again, that's for the purposes of the object avoidance sensors. Uh, they've underslung them so that these ones can see what's, in, what's all around the world without them uh, you know, without the propellers interfering with that. So that's pretty cool. And then when we look here, we've got the two on the back and then the one here. And that's that's how it can really see everything. As Again, the propellers are out of the way of these object avoidance sensors. So it's really a, a, a cool system. It kind of makes you think of like a Insta 361X or a GoPro a Max Fusion, uh, uh, Max or a Fusion because they use kind of similar types of lenses on these, the fisheye lens, so that it can see kind of uh, 360 all around. So it's, it's pretty cool, pretty cool design. So one of the things that I also think is, is cool about this design is look how skinny it is here. It is super duper skinny. Just for comparison, let me take my phone here and stick that right up there. This is a, an iPhone 11 Pro. And you can see it's, I mean, obviously it's thicker, but it's nowhere near as thick as something like a uh, uh, one of the Mavics or an Autel Evo or something like that. It's really skinny here. And so that makes it so that this case and, and the portability of it turns out to be really, really actually quite good. Uh, so even though the arms aren't bendable, so you got to fix the move the propellers to fit in this little slot here. But even though the arms aren't bendable, they don't fold up, the design of this case makes it so that it, you're actually, I mean, there's no wasted space at all. You could have a second battery here, take this out, put a second battery in here. And uh, it's, it's actually quite small of a package. So you can very easily, once you zip this up, throw it in your backpack or something like that. And uh, you can see it's super duper small here and uh, it'll fit in just fine. So that's the uh, Skydio 2. I'm super excited about it. I'm disappointed because I don't have the remote control yet. That's what I really, really, really want. Uh, but until that comes, I'm flying around with my phone. Like I said, I've got three, three flights on it. I'll be releasing another video very, very shortly uh, talking about my flying experience. But I thought it was important to kind of walk through what all we have here. Again, this is the base kit that you can buy for $1,000. This is all the contents you get with it. And uh, it's, so far, it's been fantastic. Uh, although... Without the remote control, the limit of a thousand or a hundred meters or whatever uh, is quite constricting, but so far the camera is working out really well. So anyways, that's the Skydio 2. Hope that was useful for you. If you're interested in the Skydio or any other drones, hit the uh, subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on any other videos. I uh, hope this was useful. If it was, hit that like. Leave a comment if you have any questions or you have any thoughts on content you wanna see about the Skydio. 
Otherwise, hope to see you on another one soon. Get out and go fly it in the meantime, whether you have a Scotty or some other drone. And I hope to see you on another one soon. Ciao.